Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling blessed in Jesus this morning. Now, today is January the 21st in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, as you've noticed, I've been stoking the fire. I've been trying to fill you with anticipation. I've been trying to whet your appetite on this study that we are going to embark upon. And that, of course, is the study of the spiritual man. Now, in order to understand the spiritual man, as I noted yesterday, we have to understand that there are many spirits in the world. First John tells us that we need to test the spirits to see if they are of the Most High. And we do this first and foremost according to the Word of God. And as I have been posting these videos, Strange Fire, and I will continue to post them, and I deeply and strongly encourage you to watch each of them, please note that this is not an attack against anything. It's simply searching for the truth and defending the truth. Because we have seen a wave of experiences move into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the last hundred or so years that never were experienced and certainly are not biblical within the last 2,000 years. And for that matter, throughout the history of God's people. And what I mean by this is many people define an experience with the Holy Spirit based upon outward emotions based upon manifestations, but the work of the Holy Spirit begins in our heart, a new heart that God gives us upon the moment of our new birth. And he begins to work out the old things, the old ways of the flesh, and we begin to take on the person and the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, for many of us, this is a process, which is a biblical term called sanctification, and so what you're going to learn is there is no second blessings of sort. There are stages of growth, new experiences of joy in the Lord. But we are filled at the moment of new birth with his spirit. We are baptized in the spirit. And he begins to work in us in the core of our hearts, in the core of our souls, in the core of our spirits, and the ultimate goal is that the old things, envy, jealousy, bitterness, anger, dissension, argumentativeness, selfishness, self-centeredness, all of these things are replaced with the fruit of the Spirit, which we read in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, meekness, gentleness, humility. And that's what the Bible tells us. For example, in John chapter 16... Beginning at verse 7, Jesus says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, that I leave earth. For if I go not away, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, my Spirit, says the Lord Jesus, will not come into you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. He will reprove your heart. He will convict you of the sin that lies within you and of righteousness. He will teach you what it means to stand before the Lord, before God, clothed in righteousness that was accomplished through Calvary by the blood of Jesus. And he will cause you to fear God and to fear his judgment. Now notice, he does not say when the Holy Spirit comes unto you, you will experience these outward manifestations, but everything is directed inward. He will reprove the world of sin. He will reprove the world of righteousness. He will reprove the world of judgment. Or as Paul tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, he will teach us the word. He will reprove us. He will rebuke us. He will exhort us with all long-suffering and doctrine. And that's the key element that's been lost in the church world today, is doctrine. 
people want to follow experience rather than doctrine. For example, if you watch the video that I uploaded with Joni Erickson Tata, the paraplegic, she said when these charismatics and these Pentecostal people with good hearts maybe and good intentions want to pray for her healing, that God will deliver her from that wheelchair. She says, also while you're praying, will you pray that God will do an inner work of grace through his spirit in my heart, that he'll take all those petty inconveniences away from me when I become irritated, when I become discouraged. And so she focuses by saying that the work of the spirit in the inner workings of her heart not based upon any outward emotions or any outward manifestations. And if you stay with me and you listen to these videos, Strange Fire, as I upload them, and you prayerfully consider what is being said, and you see that the truth is being presented with love and kindness, however, yet the falsehood is being exposed, you will begin to be transformed in your mind and you'll begin to fall back to doctrine, the teachings of the Word of God, as opposed to the experiences which so many are seeking and are evident in so many other false religions, such as Hinduism, the New Age movement, Roman Catholicism, and on and on. And I only say this because much of this is so familiar to us that we accept it as a part of the church of the living body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We accept it as the work of the Spirit. But what we are going to find when compared to Holy Scripture, they fall desperately short. So I trust the Lord Jesus will open your eyes to these new truths and that he will use these teachings to form you and to shape you into defenders of truth as you stand upon the word of God. Well, with that being said, let's turn to Genesis chapter 39, and we're continuing our story with Joseph. The last we were together, he was sold as a slave by his brothers. His father had been told that he had been killed. And where we pick up in chapter 39, verse 1, it says, Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And notice verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph. Even in his suffering, the Lord was with him. And his master, in verse 3, saw that the Lord was with him. Joseph lived a life unto God that gave evidence of his devotion to God. And it was evident to all that were around him. And so the Lord made all that Joseph had prosper in his hand. And not only did Joseph prosper, but Potiphar prospered because Joseph was around him. And so Joseph found grace in Potiphar's sight, and he served him faithfully, loyally. And Potiphar made Joseph overseer over his whole house, over everything he had he put in Joseph's hand. Now it came to pass from the time that Joseph was made overseer in the house, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house or Potiphar's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And Joseph in verse 6 was a good person. He was well favored. Well, it came to pass after these things that Potiphar's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. She lusted after Joseph. And so she said unto Joseph, lie with me. But he refused. And he said unto her, Behold, all that my master has he has committed into my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. He hasn't kept anything back from me, but you are his wife. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Not sin against Potiphar, not even sin against himself, but sin against God. And this shows us that in Joseph's list of priorities in his life, God was first. And Joseph wouldn't allow himself to cross such a line because of his commitment, his loyalty, and his faithfulness unto his God. And it came to pass, as she spoke to Joseph day by day, she relentlessly assailed him. She relentlessly tried to seduce him day after day, 
No doubt by the things she said and the way she acted around him, and yet he did not hearken unto her. He would not lie with her. And so as time passed, when Joseph came into the house to do his business, there was none of the men of the house within. He was alone. And so she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. But he fled so quickly that he left his garment in her hand. Now it came to pass in verse 13, when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and that he had fled and she was angry because of his rejection, she called the other men of the house and said, see, Potiphar has brought in the Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in to lie with me and I cried with a loud voice. And when he heard that I cried with a loud voice, he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. Well, we know from the story that this is a false accusation. And without touching on the things that are going on in the world that we live in even today, a woman's accusation carries much weight and has great consequences, regardless if she's right or wrong in those accusations. Well, she laid up the garment as evidence until Potiphar came home. And when he came home, she said unto him, The Hebrew servant which you have brought unto us came in to mock me, came in to take advantage of me, came in to seduce me, to lie with me, possibly even to rape me. And so she repeats the tale unto Potiphar, her husband. But in verse 19, it says, When his master heard the words of his wife, when she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant unto me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison. A man that has been wrongly accused being cast into prison. Again, we see the similarities in the story of Jesus because Jesus too was a man that was wrongly accused. And he was tried, sentenced, and found guilty, but was innocent in all the accusations that were made against him. But even in verse 21, as Joseph was in prison, the Lord was with Joseph. And he showed mercy unto Joseph, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hands all the prisoners that were in the prison. In other words, he makes Joseph a trustee of the prison. And Joseph has benefits and rights that other prisoners do not have, that other prisoners do not enjoy. And the keeper of the prison trusted Joseph to such a point that it says he looked not to anything that was under his hand. He trusted Joseph to do all that he was asked of because the Lord was with Joseph. And all that Joseph did, the Lord made it to prosper. Why? Because Joseph kept God and his relationship with God first in everything he did. And we know that Joseph isn't bitter even about the fact that his brothers have sold him into slavery, that Joseph has kept his heart right before God because God wouldn't bless him and favor him had it not been so. And so because Joseph's heart is right with God, everything else in Joseph's life is right with God. And there's an important lesson that we need to learn there, friends. We can be religious. We can play the game. We can do all the right things. But if our heart hasn't been touched by the hand of the Lord, if his spirit doesn't reside within us in doing an inner work of grace in our hearts, then everything else is corrupted. But if our hearts are right and God favors and blesses our hearts, then everything around us will be blessed and favored, highly favored, because of our faithfulness unto God. Well, we're going to close there today, friends. And the next time together, we'll pick up in chapter 40, which is going to talk about Joseph's experience in prison and the interpretation of the dreams that he gives, which will ultimately lead to his freedom. And so what I'd like to leave you with today is this, friends. Think about what Joseph has experienced. Put yourself in his shoes. Would you be bitter? Would you be angry? Or would you trust in the full providence of God directing your every step that God hasn't promised us a life of bliss? Sometimes we are going to experience unnecessary, inconvenient things in our lives. But if we'll only trust in God, each step of the way, 
We can be confident that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust that your day today will be blessed in Jesus. And no matter what you're experiencing in this life, that you'll be deeply rooted and grounded in the love of God, in your fellowship with God, in your obedience unto God. And for that, you'll experience his favor and blessing. Now, as he wills and until next time, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.